Low. The fell monster with the deadly sting. Who passes mountains, breaks through fenced walls and firm embattled spears, and with his filth taints all the world. Thus me my guide addressed, and beckoned him, that he should come to shore, near to the stony causeway's utmost edge. Forth with that image vile of fraud appeared, his head and upper part exposed on land, but laid not on the shore his bestial train. His face the semblance of a just man's war, so kind and gracious was its outward cheer, the rest was serpent all, two shaggy claws reached to the armpits, and the back and breast, and either side, were painted o'er with nodes and orbits. Colors variegated more nor Turks nor Tartars air on cloth of state with interchangeable embroidery wove, nor spread arachne o'er her curious loom. As oft times a light skiff, moored to the shore, stands part in water, part upon the land, or, as where dwells the greedy German boar, the beaver settles watching for his prey, so on the rim, that finked the sand with rock, sat perched the fiend of evil. In the void glancing, his tail upturned its venomous fork, with sting like scorpions armed. Then thus my guide, now need our way must turn few steps apart, far as to that ill beast, who couches there. Thereat toward the right our downward course we shapped, and, better to escape the flame and burning merly, ten paces on the verge proceeded. Soon as we to him arrive, a little further on mine I beholds a tribe of spirits, seated on the sand near the wide chasm. Forth with my master spake, that to the full thy knowledge may extend of all this round contains, go now, and mark the mean these wear, but hold not long discourse. Till thou returnest, I with him meantime will parley that to us he may vouchsafe the aid of his strong shoulders. Thus alone yet forward on the extremity I pocked of that seventh circle, where the mournful tribe were seated. At the eyes forth gushed their pangs. Against the vapors and the torrid soil alternately their shifting hands they plied. Thus used the dogs in summer still to ply their jaws and feet by turns, when bitten sore by gnats, or flies, or gadflies swarming round. Noting the visages of some, who lay beneath the pelting of that dolorous fire, one of them all I knew not, but perceived, that pendant from his neck each bore a pouch with colors and with emblems various marked, on which it seemed as if there I did feed. And when amongst them looking round I came, a yellow purse I saw with azure wrought, that wore a lion's countenance and port. Then still my sight pursuing its career, another I beheld, than blood more red a goose display of whiter wing than curd. And one, who bore a fat and azure swine pictured on his white scrip, addressed me thus, What dost thou in this deep? Go now and know, since yet thou livest, that my neighbor here Vitaliano on my left shall sit. A Paduan with these Florentines am I, oft times they thunder in mine ears, exclaiming, O haste that noble knight! He who the pouch with the three beaks will bring. This said, he writhed the mouth, and lulled the tongue out, like an ox that licks his nostrils. I, lest longer stay he ill might brook, who bade me stay not long, backward my steps from those sad spirits turned. My guide already seated on the haunch of the fierce animal I found, and thus he me encouraged. Be thou stout, be bold. Down such a steep flight must we now descend. Mount thou before, for that no power the tail may have to harm thee. I will be ith midst. As one, who hath an ague fit so near, his nails already are turned blue, and he quivers all o'er, if he but eye the shade, such was my cheer at hearing of his words. But shame soon interposed her threat, who makes the servant bold in presence of his lord. I settled me upon those shoulders huge, and would have said, but that the words to aid my purpose came not, look thou clasp me firm. But he whose succor then not first I proved, soon as I mounted, in his arms aloft, embracing, held me up, and thus he spake, Gerion. Now move thee. Be thy wheeling gyres of ample circuit, easy thy descent. Think on th unusual burden thou sustainst. As a small vessel, backening out from land, her station quits, so thence the monster loosed, and when he felt himself at large, turned round there where the breast had been, his forked tail. Thus, like an eel, outstretched at length he steered, gathering the air up with retractile claws. Not greater was the dread when fate and the rains let drop at random, whence high heaven, whereof signs yet appear, was wrapped in flames, 
nor when ill-fated Icarus perceived, by liquefaction of the scalded wax, the trusted pennons loosened from his loins, his sire exclaiming loud, ill way thou keepst. Then was my dread, when round me on each part the air I viewed, and other object none save the fell beast. He slowly sailing, wheels his downward motion, unobserved of me, but that the wind, arising to my face, breathes on me from below. Now on our right I heard the cataract beneath us leap with hideous crash, whence bending down to explore, new terror I conceived at the steep plunge. For flames I saw, and wailing smote mine ear, so that all trembling close I crouched my limbs, and then distinguished, unperceived before, by the dread torments that on every side drew nearer, how our downward course we wound. As falcon, that hath long been on the wing, but lord nor bird hath seen, while in despair the falconer cries, Ah me! Thou stoopst to earth. Weary descends, and swiftly down the sky in many an orbit wheels, then lighting sits at distance from his lord in angry mood, so jeery and lighting places us on foot low down at base of the deep furrowed rock, and, of his burden there discharged, forthwith sprang forward, like an arrow from the string.